uh, fit the description, right? How many people are younger or 23 or younger, which is 23 or younger, which is we include the 23 or younger, which is everybody see that there are nine people in terms of this thing here. And now what are the percentage of the people in the age group of 30 to 35? So how do we find the percentage? Well, to find the percentage, the first thing we need to do is we need to know how many people in that group divided by the total number of people, right? Which is again, we have seven people divided by 27, which is 0.259. And then again, you just convert by multiply by 100 or move the decimal two places to the, uh, two places to the right, right? So again, basically the 25.9%. You know, later on, later on, uh, if you get to 203, they ask you if I pick out one person, what is the probability in this age group, which is the probability is 0.259, right? It, it's the same, it's the same answer, it's just a different way they ask you, right? What is the probability, what is the probability, which is again, how many people in the age group of 30 to 35, which is seven, out of the the total, which is 27. And again, the total, like I mentioned, the total, we add this thing here, that's the total number of data, right? So again, that's the idea of a percentage or the percent or the probability. Uh, you know, they try to connect all of that together, which is uh, the same idea. And lastly, lastly, if we were to add another class, what would be the lower and the upper limit of the new class? So again, like I mentioned to you guys, if we were to add my eighth class, do you agree that I need to add six data, right? Because every time you jump, every time you jump from one class to the next to the next, you have to add six, which is everybody see that again, or you can say that the next number after 53 will be 54. That's my, my lower limit will be 54. What about my upper limit, which is again, 53, I add six to give me 59. So again, that's what we have in the, you know, if they give you this data, that's what you need to do is looking at this data, how can you analyze this data and answer this question, which is again, it's basically just look at the data and answer your answer your question, which is on Alex, I think they have a few questions like this. They will ask you, uh, they will give you pie chart or they will give you something, which is they give you a chart and then you have to analyze from the chart, which is, it's not, you know, all of you guys probably saw this along the way before you get to this class. Right. So, uh, question with this, how to take a look at this data and answer the question here. Well, the next thing we have is what if they give you the raw data, right? What if they give you a raw data and then frequency distribution table, right? So this is what we need to do is they ask you again, this is, you know, it doesn't matter what the data is. This is just a raw data, a bunch of number here. And, and like I say, you know, this is what we need to do is we need to gather data and organize them, right? If, if you give this data to your boss, you probably have to find a new job because your boss is like, wait a minute, what kind of data is this? I don't know what I'm looking at, right? So this is what we need to do is we need to first, one thing is we need to organize them and to organize them, we need to construct a frequency distribution table using the data or using seven classes. So sometimes they don't tell you how many classes to, to use in this case, you have to find, you, they, they specifically want seven data, right? So looking at this thing here, how do we find or how do we construct the frequency distribution table? Well, the first thing to find or to construct anything, we need to know our class width, okay? We need to know how big is my class. I, I need to know every time I jump from one class to the next, how many data is considered in one class. So to find this thing here, this is what we need to do is we need to find a range divided by the number of class. So they give us the number of class, the number of class that we need to make is seven. So how do we find a range, which is to find a range, this is what we have, which is later on, you will see this again. To find a range is all we need to do is glance through your data, look at your data, find the highest data minus the lowest data which is in this case, the highest data that we have is 70, right? The age of the, the 
person who signed the Declaration of Independence. The oldest guy is 70. And the youngest is 27, which is, again, to find a range, we need to take 70 minus 27 to give us 43. And now we need to take that 43 and divide. So one thing if we have this is later in gen 43, not 42, sorry. 43 divided by 7 to give you 6.127. So again, 43 divided by 7, this is what you have. One thing about this, this width, one thing about this class width is you have to always round up to the nearest, nearest whole number. I know that this is not your typical, your typical routing rule, but because we try to include a person, we cannot include half of a person. Right? So no matter what the decimal is, you always go up to the next whole number. So 6.17, you go up to 7, meaning each class consists of 7 people. Your class width will be 7 people. The other thing is, same thing goes, even if they have, even if they have a whole number, even if they have a whole number, you still have to go up 1. You always go up one because you want to include every single people in it. You don't want to go down or you don't want to use the, the whole number that you have. You always have to add one more. Even if, if you divide this thing and, and it's come out like, you know, when I do this, I make a mistake. I take 69 minus uh, 27. That's why I have 42. Even if I have 42 divided by 7, I have 6. I still have to go up to the next number, which is I, I still have to go up to seven people. Because if I only use six people, I'm sorry. I won't have enough data, enough data, but I won't have enough, I won't have enough, um, I don't include every single one uh, in there. Okay? So I have to go up to the whole number in terms of that. So once we have this, once we have this, which is again, this is what we need to do is. We... Yes, question. Um, where, where did the seven come from? Because they asked us seven classes, right here, the number of class. Oh. They, okay. <laughs> they say right here, they say uh, we need to use the data and use it seven classes right here. Okay. So that's where the number of class come in, right? So you have to divide by the number of class you want. Uh, in this case, they tell us that they, we, we, most of the time they give us this, they want like eight class or five class or, you know, so that's, they will give us how many class they want it to be. Okay. So that's where the number seven come in. And again, so once we have this thing here, which is we need to start from the lowest data and every time you jump to the next class, you have to add the width, which is in this case, the class width is seven. So again, look at this thing here. Looking at this thing here, which is again, uh, let me give you the other two, which is again, the other two is very easy. You just add your upper limit and tally your data, right? So for instance, looking at this thing here, we have to start at 27 because your 27 is the the lowest data, we start with 27, and every time I jump, which is I need to add 7, which is 27 plus 7 to give me 34, 34 plus 7 will give me 41, so on, so forth. Meaning every time I jump, everybody see that every time I jump, I need to add 7 data into it. And now, looking at this thing here, looking at this thing here, the upper limit is basically one number below this, right? If my next number is 34, my upper limit right here will be 33 and so on and so forth. And same thing though, if you want to, every time you jump from 33 to the next one, you add seven, which is 33 plus seven to get you 40, 40 plus seven to get so forth, which is again, this is your class. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven class. And this seven class, which is again, each class has seven data because of this information we have. So sometimes your, your, your data can be eight or six or nine, whatever. But again, this one here, each class has seven data. Each time we jump, we add seven, seven, seven in terms of that. And once you have the class,